Yes, Chair Addison. Here. Vice Chair Tesher. Tosher. Tosher, thank you. Commissioner Harmon. Here. Commissioner Golden. Here. Commissioner Zaringer. Here. Commissioner Gilman. Here. Commissioner Chisholm is absent. He is absent for medical reasons, oh. so that's an excused absence. Okay, we will move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Linda, would you please be absent? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almost done. <laughs> <laughs> Chair Addison, you, you may want to announce that Susie Francine is under the weather and therefore cannot attend. Oh. Yes, I have two announcements to make before we go any further. I'd like to introduce Joe Fitz, who is the new assistant city manager and has an extensive background in Thing City. <laughs> Thing City. Planning, etc. So we're very happy to have him on here tonight. Uh, apparently, uh, Council Member Francina is under the weather, weather, so she will not be able to be with us tonight as our Council Liaison. However, she'll of course have the option of watching this. And she said she would. Tomorrow. She said she would she watch it tonight. Yes. <laughs> Live. So off we go. Okay. Um, public comment first. Are, are there, other than those who are speaking about this. I have one, yeah. Um, on, uh, wait a minute. I have to find it. It's the attendance on it. It, it. it says that Betty was here and she wasn't here. Okay. We'll make that correction if you would, please, Joe. Nugent. 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 Yeah. I never can pronounce that. Yeah. Okay. When. Yeah. When. when. Yes. She was not here. She'd already resigned. Okay. Uh, June 17th. Any emendations or corrections there? Hearing none, we'll move on. And July 18th, and we move on. Okay, first item on our agenda is the arts grants. Uh, the applications have been extended and uh, we have applications in hand. Yes, Linda? Do you want to welcome Andy too? Well, of course, yes, <laughs> good heavens. How could I have forgotten? We have a new member of the commission, Andy Gilman, and we are delighted to have him with us. Uh, we have another <laughs> another member, Nigel uh, Chisholm, who is uh, in England recovering from surgery, so he'll be with us at our next meeting. But Andy, we're delighted to have you with us. It's, you. You're going to bring a whole new perspective and background that's going to be very useful. All right, so now we can go forward with the arts grants, and uh, Marcy, you're in charge. Mm -hmm. I'll turn it I over to you. I have a correction to the agenda first, actually. Oh, okay. That Monica kind of set the... Um, agenda for the grants presentations um, it your says, mic on. Mm -hmm. um, receive presentations from grant applicants which we're going to do and then it had and discuss allocation we're not discussing the allocation tonight we're just here to see your faces and hear your your spiel and ask you questions if we have questions and then next month at our next Arts Commission meeting we're going to discuss what we learned tonight. We're going to think about everything. And in that meeting, we're going to talk about allocations. So just to clarify, OK? Um, well, anyway, thank you all <clears throat> for submitting applications for the grants. It's what keeps us going. It keeps you going. So it's mutually beneficial. Anyway, um, enjoyed reading everything, and now I look forward to hearing, hearing from you about them. So why don't we start with um, Beatrice Wood Center application. You guys, the Children's Art Workshop. That's the 
Yes. Yes. Exactly. Um, so since I'm first up, I'm not quite sure. Do you ask questions about it, or I review the? Just uh, give us a few minute, you know, summary of what you want to do yeah. with the money, yeah. and if we have questions, we'll ask you. Well, several years ago, we started doing a, a free children's art workshop, um, which was started by a woman who had three young kids, and she was um, from a family of artists. Her father was an art instructor, and she was the perfect person because she really understood the challenges that the art has and, and, the, and the, the different um, competing so costs, sure. everything from you know, ballet and you know, private classes and everything mm -hmm. that kids wanted to do, and she really felt they had to be so, um, so I got an initial grant from someone that allowed us to get started doing mm -hmm. it on the first Saturday of every month. Mm -hmm. and so, and then we used up that grant, and then we've basically been taking it out of our um, out of our operating fund, which um, pretty much everything that we do that come, ends up coming out of our operating fund. And I wanted to expand them to be weekly. And um, one of the things that became very clear um, in working with her it, is that. Parents don't necessarily know how to teach art at home. And that's where things start to go awry <laughs> as far as art's at, as far as the understanding of mm -hmm. art. So she so we would include the parents mm -hmm. in the thing. And quite often when you have quite often parents will have, you know, a, a five year old that needs more assistance and an eight year old that wants to be independent, sit on the other end of the table with her friends or whatever. Um, and so it's a way of um, teaching um, parents how to work arts education into their mm -hmm. homes. So, mm -hmm. um, so we do a wide range of things, um, you know, from still lives to perspective, to mm -hmm. abstraction, to working with clay, culture, mm -hmm. everything. So what we're looking to do is to expand them so they're every Saturday. And in order to keep all the money in the community, which is rich in artists, we will be working with um, only instructors that are Ohio-based. And, um, and we would be opening it up to, we would say you have to live in Ojai to come and take the free workshop. It, I, I think we're much more interested in people coming to Ojai as an arts, um, you know, seeing it as an art center that Ojai is a place that's very, very strong arts. But I figure the majority of people will be local to come to mm. these workshops. And um, I, I noticed when I did my, um, my application, I didn't give you the hours, the, the timing. What we found, we started off doing three hour workshops. Mm -hmm. We found after about two hours, <laughs> you lose the kids. Yeah. <laughs> so so we so we're, I'm asking for it's, it's a three hour um, instructor instructor would be for three hours to to time for yeah. travel and set up. It takes ten minutes to get up the mountain and then set up. Um, but actually, the actual instruction would be two hours um, every Saturday. And I also noticed um, I said we would be starting them in January and then going through the calendar year. I know your approval of grants is not until later than that. So they would basically run for a year based upon when, when it begins. January through December. Okay. Um, I have a question. Or does anyone else have a question? And then I can. Yeah, I have one. You, moving from once a month to every Saturday is a big jump, and certainly it, it increases costs in terms of your grant application. Did you give any thought to making it twice a month or some other pattern? Um, we found that having it the first Saturday of every month itself is a little confusing. So mm -hmm. you know, we have the right Saturday to come. Sure. And so the, the reason for making it musical chairs. Yeah, pay no attention. This is the Arts Commission. These things happen. <laughs> so, so the reason for um, wanting to do it every Saturday is what we found is that we have a group of parents who bring their children, but quite often they'll be busy on that Saturday mm -hmm. and then they don't come to the next one. So we figured we would be actually able to um, serve a larger amount of the community because they wouldn't be able to come. You know, they may be busy on one Saturday, they come the next Saturday. Right. So opening it up. Um, we, we could cut back in that way if we had to, um, but ideally, it'd be great if everyone knew Saturday afternoons at the mm -hmm. center is the place to come for three children's art workshops. That makes sense. Yeah. And, and I had a question, too. Um, you were saying one would be a family, one with, with family, and one with just the students, or am I confusing that? No, it'd be one workshop. What we found is that involving the parents in the workshops just really helps. Okay. And they, they work alongside the kids, and the idea is also that they learn some of these techniques. Thanks to themselves, it, yeah. Ever since working with this woman, I, I learned a lot about how this works, and, it, and it's interesting the, the giant difference between a five-year-old and a seven-year-old as far as the attention mm -hmm. span, what they get, how 
you know, yeah. what they remember, what they recall, and such. So, um, so having the parents involved and, um, and the kids really and, helps. And you are saying approximately 20 students, you're thinking? Yes, yes. And, uh, that, and again, you know, I'm, I'm going to set it up so that we can have more. I, I like to serve as much of the community as possible. But I think that, say, even if we had 50 families who were taking advantage of it, it may end up being more like 20 per, per, per session. Day. Anyone else? Okay. okay. I, just, I just had a quick question. Um, I just I didn't have time to look up what the Windgate Foundation was that is matching your funds. Yes, the Windgate Foundation is the foundation I originally went to get the grant for this. They're okay. located in Arkansas. Um, oh. I have known them through a personal connection, and, and the person um, basically is someone who has the funds, but in order for people not to be bothering her, she started a foundation. And, and so she recommended what we should be asking for. And what they've, been done, what they've done for the last um, several years, I think eight years now, is they've been giving us a $25,000 matching funds grant every, every year for operational support. Great. So, um, so what I mentioned in here is I would be going, so I would that, so we'll be reporting the for that for the next two years. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I know I have the matching funds that you folks are requesting, but I would also want to ask the community for matching funds to see Thank you. I do have one more question. I'm sorry, I've got one more thing. Um, so, how many how how many teachers per pupil? Or I know you've got a parent there. Are you planning on just one instructor or I'm planning on one instructor per uh, per workshop? Okay. And um, if we are approved, um, I'd be reaching out to the community. I've already identified a number of artists who are also educators that would be able to step right. Great. Um, we would also look at some, some educational aspect groups, artists that aren't work, used to working with kids, having some days where we could have the content and them learn it. So it, so it would be, um, the idea is for it'd be several different artists, because of course different artists have different strengths, different techniques that right. to bring. So for a child in the community, it's this wonderful opportunity considering right. all the artists that are in Ohio. And then the ages was the other thing. It's three to eleven, is that what? Five to ten. Five to ten. I don't know where I got three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was the other one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Andy, did you have any questions? Okay. I was just looking at your uh, balance sheet, and it looked like July 18th through June 19th, you were running at a deficit. So you do, and you think you'll be able to, with your matching funds, make this program happen? Yes. In other words, not borrowing money from your matching funds and allocating it somewhere else so that you're not in a deficit next year. Right. Yes, that's, I, I, yes. I'm, I'm certain I can. Promise. I'm actually <laughs> able to go to, we have, we have a very unusual board, the Happy Valley Foundation, where they, you, unlike other, a lot of boards where you can buy your way onto a board and you expect to get a certain amount of money. Right. That's not something you have to do, so we actually do not have a wealthy board that gives us lots of money. Um, but at the same time, um, it, it's, people are really concerned, and there, mm -hmm. there are funds that I can request as mm -hmm. needed. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. And Linda, you asked the question that I was going to ask about had you had you reached out yet to potential instructors, and I would assume yeah, and I would assume that the twenty six hundred dollars is to pay a stipend right, for exactly. the teachers. The majority of the funds are for that, that, that teacher stipend. So again, the money stays in the Ohio okay. community, and then there's a material Great. Right. Well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Kevin. so much. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Thank you. Okay. Brian Berman, you're up next. Hello. Hey. Hello. Doesn't seem like it is. Just tap the microphone. No, it doesn't seem to be on. Probably on the board. Ray's going for the extra credit back there. 
Yeah. Yes. No. Oh, there, there we go. Are. Bravo. Thank you, Randy. Oh, my God. So we missed all of his um, it's all right. spiel. Hallelujah. I mean, if no one wanted to listen to it. I think it would probably will pick up on our microphones enough of him to get it. Okay, hopefully. Everybody okay. ready for me yes. now? Fire away. Thank yes, you. Yes, the art of peace building. Yeah, so this has been uh, my theme uh, three years in a row. We focused on um, International Day of Peace and also the Ojai Parade. And uh, so this, this year we had our first um, I don't know what you call it when you have to not apply 2019, so. Uh, Get a respite. <laughs> a respite. And, uh, you know, during this year, uh, for, for those, I think you all know that, um, that Ojai is an international city of peace, and that's, this is kind of the work that myself and my wife and uh, Ray Powers uh, manage and so this year Marta Nelson passed away and Marta asked me if I would continue her legacy of creating peace polls in Ojai. So that's the gist of this application. Um, we um, made a, a, a request to Tiffany Morse of the Ohio School District. Mm -hmm. And she said that she would love that we have peace polls at all of the schools. Great. So that's basically uh, the intent of this grant application. Um, there are presently, I, I have a, a website, ohipeace.net, and there's approximately 20 peace polls presently in Ojai. There's some that haven't been documented that keep appearing. And uh, so we're, we're hoping to increase that by 12 or 13 more in this project. Um, I would also like to, even though I didn't include it in my write-up, um, I would also like to have a, a more public, public map of where they are, and uh, so people can actually tour around and visit them and, um, and utilize them as a place where they can uh, look at what they could do to um, make peace with people in their lives. So I think that's a, a big enough introduction. Most of you know me. Um, I'm very uh, dedicated to do this work here. So, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> did Tiffany also agree about the, did Tiffany also agree about the uh, presentations that you proposed so you would, you or, or somebody else would come to all the schools and uh, talk? Yes, yes, so there's uh, two aspects of that. There's obviously the installation where we would talk with the students. But the important thing is to uh, um, have, a talk about the legacy. Why is this a symbol for peace? Why is it in um, 180 countries? There's thousands of them. And the, the importance of us moving away from um, the horrors of uh, atomic bomb, uh, atomic weapons, and learning conflict resolution skills. So that would be part of our presentation. Yelena. Yeah, um, I'm just curious, you said approximately 13 poles, so that would cover all the campuses, you're assuming? Yes. Um, what materials are you planning on making these out of? Um, redwood. Redwood. Okay, just yeah. like the standard? Four by four posts. The one we have out here? Yes. Okay. Yeah, painted, and um, my hope is that the, our teachers will allow the children to completely paint them themselves. We'll also be asking if the school wants to have an inscription engraved in the pole. The primary inscription is may peace prevail on earth, but that isn't a absolute requirement. It also can be done in different languages. So the school may determine that they want 
four different languages on it, but they still can be painting them as well. So we w really want to collaborate with uh, the schools and the art teachers that will be working with the students. Likewise, with the placement I'm sorry, of the pole, the placement of the po it. poles <coughs> on the campus. Yeah, that would be determined by the school. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Any follow up? That was my question. Thank you all. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then, do we have someone coming on behalf of um, the Happy Valley Fund for the Chamber on the Mountain? Hi. Hi. I'm Christine. Christine. I'm yeah. Christine Gregory. <laughs> Another Christine. <laughs> I'm the um, webmaster, graphic designer, and PR person for Chamber on the Mountain. Um, so I'm here from Goleta <laughs> representing <laughs> with oh. my son, with my nine year old son who tagged along with me um, to, to represent Chamber on the Mountain. Um, Heidi Lee Walder, the artistic director, she's a harpist, a famous world-renowned harpist, and she's currently teaching um, harp in Utah tonight, so that's why she couldn't be here to, to talk to you, but I'll do my best. <laughs> but Chamber on the Mountain, um, it's a music series, a chamber music series um, that takes place at the Logan House in Upper Ojai at the Beatrice Wood Center for the Arts, and um, it's beginning its seventh season, so, and the seasons run from September through May each year, five concerts a year, and they bring in the, I mean, the finest um, classical, you know, musicians, you know, in, in the world. They really do. Um, up and coming young musicians that are going to be very famous one day that are, um, like, uh, we're going to have a cellist in May, or no, in March, March 1st who just won the uh, 2019 um, Tchaikovsky, International Tchaikovsky Competition, which is wow. like the best, biggest comp competition in music there is. He won first prize. Mm. So he'll be here performing March 1st. And it's just a wonderful opportunity for the community, you know, to mm -hmm. be able to go to a, you know, a small venue, mm -hmm. an intimate setting, mm -hmm. and just up close see these you know, fantastic, you know, musicians, and then be able to talk to them afterwards and ask them questions. You know, we always have a reception after each concert. And um, the musicians then, usually the next day, will go to the Besant Hill School and perform for the students there. And I always give like a master class, and the students can ask them questions. And it's just a, such a mm -hmm. wonderful thing, it really is. The, the concerts are fabulous. I don't know if you've, any of you have ever been to one, but you really should go. <laughs> They're really great. Yeah, I've been to several, and the, oh, the music is superb. You They're know, you look familiar to me when I walked. So that's where I've seen you. That's yes. where you've seen me. Superb, yeah. 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 Do you remember first which, which um, well, artist you Well, I went saw? to the last one uh, with... Uh, the pianist. The pianist. Yeah. And several others. Yeah, yeah. Tomer Gewurzman. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was wonderful, yeah. I have one question, if I may. Yeah, sure. Um, I was pleased to see that you offer students free admission. Yes. I hadn't realized that. They're encouraged but to come, yeah. is that just Besson Hill School That's students? That's one of my questions. <laughs> you know, we, we would definitely offer free admission to any students in the community. Do you disseminate that information we, to we all the schools? We haven't yet, but we, we should do that. If we were to offer you a grant, would you be willing to yes. accept that as a condition? I think that'd that be fantastic. you have to spread the word about that? And we would spread the word. We advertise, we, we post flyers all over town. We advertise um, um, in the, um, uh, the Ojai Visitor Guide, uh, the magazine. Mm -hmm. And in the Ojai, um, the, the newspaper. Ojai Valley News? Uh, yeah, Ojai Valley News. And um, I'm sorry, there's a little bug right here. On the website, we do ma uh, mailings. We have almost 500 people on our email list that we, we send emails out to. We, we, would, we would definitely announce that, that students are welcome to attend for but free. But importantly, you events. could contact the music departments in all the other schools. We certainly could. We could contact the schools. Them to 
send, I send yeah I send out the press releases I write them and send them out and I could I could send out notices and announcements to the we schools can do it too. I think be that, happy to that could make a big difference mm -hmm. I think. And it's wonderful and then these students um, especially if they're they have an interest in music they're studying an instrument they can see what hard work dedication can you know how it can pay off and or just to see that anyone can follow their dreams you know and and uh, mm -hmm. yeah have a wonderful career Andy, okay. I, it's a pretty small venue, though, correct? It's pretty. It's pretty small. Eighty. Right. We can. We can. We could get in a hundred people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if there's a, um, you know, if, if if it's just a pianist, definitely we can bring ch ch more chairs up closer to the piano. Right. If it's a string quartet and a pianist, could be get a little crowded, and you know we have right. to get creative in in placing the chairs. But eighty to a hundred people. And, and yeah. we've even had it where it's been, they've been so sold out, we've had people spill over out into the patio. <laughs> so, but uh, it seems to work. <laughs> well, I'm leading to if, if that really could be promulgated, a, a bigger venue being required would be a great problem. <laughs> I think yeah. that would be a yeah. great problem. Yeah. And also the Besson Hill School has a Zalk Theater that, right. with mm -hmm. over 100 seats, mm -hmm. and maybe they would allow us to, to move in there for the concerts and... Yeah. and um, Hey, maybe the Libby Bowl <laughs> yeah, down yeah. the road. <laughs> uh, so, so my question is, uh, I read in, in your grant that you are moving from evening performances to afternoon, and it's to accommodate the students, so it'll be after the time they're out of school. Yeah, we've actually already moved from evenings to afternoons, which have worked so much better. Mm -hmm. um, also just because it gets so dark here at night, and it's in Upper Ojai, and people would just get kind of lost and drive by, and and didn't really know, couldn't find the address. Moving it to the afternoons was just so much better that people could easily find, find it and then leave while it's still light as well to, to, to drive home. Um, but yeah, it, it helps accommodate you know, just older people who have trouble driving at night, students, family that's family friendly, you know, younger children to come and during the day and, and just, it, it just it just worked out so much better to move from an evening concert. But it to won't an be so early that the it's three p.m. three o'clock on 3 Sundays. Three p.m. So yeah. yeah, there would be kind of a rush. Well, I'm just thinking some students kids. are still in school. Yeah, not on a Sunday. It's on Sundays. Oh, oh always Sundays. they're always I'm on. Sorry. Yeah, I'm so, yeah so, no, it's okay. Excuse me. They're I didn't always look on at the day of yeah. the week. They're always on Sunday afternoons at three, okay. and they begin at three o'clock. Sundays. I'll yeah. write that down now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we want everyone to be able to attend. On Sunday, I, I have one question, and it, it's a kind of a large grant for us. And so I was looking at um, the director's fee and all that. And I, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the art center has chamber concerts, and they've had them for 15 years now. And um, they have they have really wonderful musicians there, also. Yeah, sure, I bet. Yeah, yeah. and they have a Steinway, and it's open to the public, and it's in Ojai. So I, I guess I'm looking at the cost of the directorship, and I'm feeling kind of like, you know, they don't pay their director at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I can understand having to pay the performers. I got yes, that. Yes, that they definitely need to be paid. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I think they charge, they used to charge 10 and now they charge like $15 a concert, which is really reasonable. And I'm looking, you're charging at like $25. $25 a ticket. Yeah. yeah. So for a family to go, even to take their children, they would have to come up with... About $100. $100. Yeah. yeah. So those are a few of my concerns about that. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if there's a question involved in that, but... I think um, for us to consider when we make decisions, certainly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the topic was raised about opening, more actively recruiting students to come. Yeah, yeah. And if you've got a capacity of 100, what if you're really successful, which would be great, but attracting these students, and the students aren't paying, so you're not right. going to have the same, your income is not going to be right. what it would have been if they were full, you know, $25. So have you thought about how you would manage that? No, because this is kind of, a, I mean, we've always allowed the Besson Hill students for free, um, opening it up to, to all schools and just saying all students. Um, mm -hmm. So this is new, new to me. Be, it would have to be a conversation that, that we'd have right. to have. And so I don't really know how we would manage that. We would definitely need to move into a bigger venue, such as a Zalk Theater. Um, it may balance out where 
Um, or maybe more parents would come and pay their $25 tickets mm -hmm. while they're bringing their mm -hmm. children who get in for free and to expose their kids to At this point, it's an unknown. Yeah. 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 Would there be room for kids to sit on the floor? That, I mean, yeah. you might not be able to fit all the chairs, but maybe you kids, could have kids, can sit, kids yeah. in the front sitting on the floor. Yeah, crisscross yeah, applesauce on the yeah. floor, yeah, around. And that would be a great experience for them, too, mm -hmm. just to be at that, that up close. It's quite a fat, fantastic experience. I think that's part of the experience, that kind of it is. chamber music in your yes. living room. Yes, it is, and it's like in a big living experience, room right you know. Have you had any conversations with uh, Besson Hall Hill School about using the Zolk Auditorium? Not yet, not yet, because we've always been able to manage the audience in the in the Logan House, um, the, the the audience size so far. So, no, we haven't. Uh, or I I don't know if, if there has been a discussion. I wasn't in, involved with it. I don't know if Heidi's ever brought that up with them. The only comment I I think I'd have to make, in fairness, is and I I think the acoustics in Zolk are far superior to the room where the concerts are held now, which has a, a very brittle sound. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, the Zalks Theater sounds like it would be fantastic yeah. for... I have one more question. Question? I have one more question. Yeah, of course. So you, you say we, now I'm a little confused because yeah. <laughs> it says Happy Valley School on here, but it isn't Happy Valley School? Well, it's, best, it's, it's the, it used to be called the Happy Valley right. School. I, I, I don't mean the title, I oh. mean, are you part of the school or are you not part of the school? No, I'm, I'm I'm pers well the chamber on the mountain it's That's it's, what it's I'm actually yeah it's actually um under the Happy Valley Cultural Center which is part of the Happy Valley Foundation okay in That's that what family. I wanted to know so, yeah okay yes so you yes. are part of yes the foundation that part of the foundation yeah. indeed foundation. needs to be made yes. clear because yeah I mean yeah. you're bringing these people here for the I, I understand it's a wonderful cultural thing. I'm not yes. doubting that, but yeah. the school's bringing them here, so. Yes, okay. yeah. All right. It's all, yeah, question. all part of. Uh, all it's part it's of separate it. from the school, though. It, it, the they are separate. The foundation is the umbrella, mm -hmm. and this program is under the umbrella of the foundation, okay. just as Besant Hill School, as a separate entity, is under the umbrella okay. Of the foundation, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, that's that's correct. You made it clear. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, right. that's the umbrella. Okay. Sammy, Sammy, you um, I have a couple of questions. Um, you you feature young artists, is yes, that right? Yes, we do. Um, so, what constitutes young? I mean, is there like a, a upper? Yeah, age just um, usually up up and coming, um, just masters at their instrument and winning winning huge competitions going to go on to um, you know, perform with, many of them already have um, major symphonies and, and philharmonics and um, up going to be famous, you know, clearly, uh, maybe already putting out CDs. <laughs> um, so we, you know, young, young artists, and also um, we do get artists who have been out there performing in, you know, for their, their entire careers and very established, very, very well known in their in their in their field, and um, so we it's it's a nice balance. But a lot of young young musicians, like in their twenties, in their twenties, yeah, yeah. yeah. 20s. Which and then they can when they go to do the educational outreach at the school, the students, these high school students, can relate mm. to these these young people in their twenties, mm -hmm. and 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 they just love it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I have one more question. Sure. And it was something that um, Commissioner Chisholm brought up, but he's not able to be here tonight. Okay. Um, it was to do, to do with the director's salary. Yeah. Um, up to date, um, every year it looks like you've been it's twenty four thousand a year. And oh, that's but this uh, in the in the in your simple budget right here, um, it says eighteen thousand. So it, is that has that been reduced? Has that I, decision I, been taken? Or? I don't know about that. That'd be Heidi Lee Walder, the, the artistic director. Okay. And I don't know about this salary reduction to eighteen thousand. What that means? Okay, I'm, I'm because sorry. because you know part of the of the uh, you know what you're asking for is director's fees. Yeah, so I director's just fees. What, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know why it's been 24,000 and now it's going to be 18, why they're asking for 18. So I, I, I wasn't involved in that budget or... Yeah, I added it yeah. up too, it's the same. Mm -hmm. um, along with what this you were saying about shoot. outreach, that would be a concern yeah. to me. Um, if you, they do outreach at, at, up at, it's not Happy Valley, it's Besson Hill. Besson Hill now, yeah. Uh, if, we're, if we were to give you a grant that's a city grant, 
I feel yeah. that the outreach should also be offered to the other you know, public schools. I mean, yeah, the see, community. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was yeah. suggesting. Yeah, I think that would be wonderful. I mean, the outreach for the musicians to go into the classroom. Yeah, go into a oh, public school. to the musicians to go yeah. to the school. And, and maybe give a little performance or a, just, that, a, just a little performance in a little master class or something mm -hmm. to the, the music. Maybe yeah, just at group. one of the schools and have them kids come there or something. Yeah, or maybe have them come there to the Besson Hill School and invite it from stronger. Because I imagine they have it in the Zalk Theater, so maybe invite students from other public schools to come. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think that's Any a great other idea. Um, well, the uh, on the on the budget, um, two thousand dollars administrative personnel and then eight thousand dollars artistic personnel that. That's for the uh, the artistic director, or is that for the performers, or yeah, both, I, or? Well, yeah, what I have here, I, I got a copy of the, the grant application. Yeah, I see it's director salary, 18,000, artist fees, 22,000, and marketing, 2,000. So I don't have the. But yeah, I, I, it's just not clear where this money is going. Oh, okay. I mean that's the overall she's, budget for the yeah. program. She's looking at a different sheet than you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're looking. We're looking at the um, sheet that is the, uh, the the ask sheet. Oh, I didn't get a copy of that. No, you're oh, you're sorry. <laughs> talking about the total budget. I'm just talking about the total yeah. simplified budget. She's here. asking about okay. the. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Ask. I wasn't involved with the budget. Um, Would or, it be or the grant writing possible to get a follow up email from? Um, uh, Elizabeth isn't. Yeah, yeah. It was Elizabeth who 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 wrote the who wrote the this. If yes. we could get a follow up from her, yeah, explaining um, how the eight thousand plus the two thousand, how that's broken out, where that will yeah, go. Yeah, that so would the Eight thousand plus the two thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll write that down and I'll. In fact, here's Nigel. a pen. Oh, oh this is Nigel's. Okay. So yeah, if we could see where that money's going, and then I would ask her, uh, are we? Uh, helping to subsidize the five performances and if we don't do that the subsidizing will they be able to move forward right without yeah. our money yeah I, I would yeah I, I really want to see this this series continue it's it's so fantastic and so beneficial to the community I think and, and the school oh it's um, a wonderful program why is here <laughs> sorry so um, if you could follow up yeah, follow up and have Liz mm -hmm. yeah they could just email me. Okay, Liz, Mar Mar Marcy. Marcy. Okay. Yeah, Elizabeth has my contact info. Oh, great. She's got it. Okay. And I wouldn't mind being on your publicity list too for the culture for the cultural calendar. I do list your events, but I have to go searching around. Oh, and if yeah. you sent your press release directly to me, then I wouldn't have to do it. Oh, I'd I love mean, to. If you can get them ahead, if you like a year, it's great because then I can put it up there and people can plan on it. Yeah, yeah. We we've had like and I'll for link this it whole to the website season we've we've known this a year in advance okay so great. I could send you the whole list of artists okay, and I can put you on my press release okay wonderful so, so you're Linda okay Linda Harmon. <laughs> so right. thank you very much okay thank you so much thank you also uh, one just one thing if you could copy me in on that too on that email because I can then if you are a grant re recipient of the the Arts Commission yeah. I can then you know put it on the Facebook page and stuff and just a little extra yeah so Samantha <laughs> okay and email <laughs> Okay, just with you. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Let me just write down your your names here. <laughs> and uh, Linda Harmon for the press releases and stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Christine. Okay, next up we have who's representing um, OPAT, Ojai Performing Arts Theater. Uh, Joan is out of town, so we don't have a representative. Uh, so I think I could probably answer some of the questions having worked with her. Mm -hmm. And I will have to recuse myself, I think, on that basis from when we actually get to making awards. Next month. Next month. Okay. But if there are questions, I think I could answer those. Or I'll try to. Oh, are, are we still doing, are you still, are we still, are you still planning on the three productions was one question. As far as I know, yes. The, the plan is that there will be a concert and then Harvey and then Cabaret. I love Harvey. <laughs> I don't think I'm Are they going to so. take place at the Art Center or over at Matilla? The or? latest information I've had, and I'd, uh, I wasn't told that this is confidential, but my understanding is that OPAT will be renting the Art Center Theater for Cabaret. No. Okay. No? Apparently they're not. 
That's why I ask you about the third performance. Okay. So it'll be Matillaha? So it Probably will be Matillaha or someplace else, the Grange or wherever. Okay. That is a problem in this town, is finding a performance space. And I think in this particular instance, because of the nature of the different nature of the two productions, Harvey, which of course is a standard proscenium uh, format, and then Cabaret, which is, as it says, Cabaret, and that's the sort of environment that they wish to create. So I think finding a space that's functional but intimate and that has a sort of, if you will, funky Cabaret Weimar feel about it is what they're looking for. So. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, um, but this particular um, grant application is for Harvey, right? This particular grant application is oh, for, it's Harvey. Just for Harvey. Yes. Okay. Who's going to play the rabbit? I'm what? just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the question. Do we know anything about? Because um, you know, part of the of their promotion thing, it says large white rabbits in miscellaneous local locations. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> how large and, <laughs> I, and I, where? I think the uh, promotion will probably be very imaginative uh -huh. to get, get people's attention. Harvey. Walking through the farmer's market. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. I mean, oh. it's got to be easy to rent some rabbit suits, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the things that is worth reminding everyone is that uh, OPAT always donates anything over and above the cost of the production mm -hmm. uh, to a local nonprofit organization. And they've, I think, generated over $170,000, if wow. I recall the figure, uh, that have gone back into the community from these productions. Wow. And it looks like they'll fun. donate the excess to Help of Ojai for yeah, Harvey. Yeah, for, for Harvey is Help of Ojai, yeah. That's great. You're here. Any, I didn't any, have any questions. Other follow-up questions? No, that was pretty cut and okay. I mean, Thanks, it's Michael. very clear. Okay. Very clear grant. Um, next, okay, Pam, Ojai Studio Artists. Pam Grau. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Pamela. Clip. So, uh, I guess I just jump in. Uh, the Ojai Studio Artists are now in the 36th year. Um, when I moved to Ojai eight years ago and joined, uh, joined the artist community here, I was so excited to be welcomed by all these kindred spirits that were part of this organization. And uh, for me personally, I was kind of taken back by some of the competition and competitiveness that I saw. And coming from Orange County where I was working as the exhibition director on a nonprofit that was all about building community, I saw the potential of having that here too. Um, since I've been a member, we've grown, we've doubled. Uh, we went from like 45 members, we're now 72 members. And one of the challenges was uh, the tour, which we just finished this last weekend, um, that now with 72 artists, it's very hard to get around to see everybody. And even the people who visited this year were commenting on, oh, there's so much to see, we can't do it all. And so then um, we came up with the idea of Second Saturdays. Now, Second Saturdays are a free um, art tour of one area at a time. And we've broken up the Ojai Valley into um, eight different communities of artists. We, I call them tribes because <coughs> I, I treat them like tribes. So it starts in Oakview, then Miramonte, um, uh, Miners Oaks, the Arbolata area downtown, the East End, then the Upper East End, um, and then, you know, far out. So um, <coughs> we have, when I brought, when I created this idea of Second Saturdays, people were like, oh, who's going to come to that? Or nobody's going to come on our tour. Well, I'm really proud to say this last tour we had more people than we did last year. And uh, the paid tours are still very successful. And one of the reasons why we have to charge so much for the tour is it costs a lot to advertise. So this year we advertised on KCRW. Uh, we had a lot of print ads. And it's a very expensive thing to do to bring all those people in. Second Saturdays, last year we spent about $150 to advertise them. This really limits how many people we get. I mean. Luckily, we have a very large email list now that we do e-blasts. But um, to get people to know about Second Saturdays, we really need a budget. We need more money. And to keep them free, which I think is really 
I think it's amazing because everybody can go. There's no excuse, oh, oh, I can't afford a ticket. It's great for our artists, too, because instead of being competing with 72 people, you actually can go to your friend. You can go, you can become friends because we can go to each other's studios now. We can actually get to know one another. Where before, uh, in October, no one ever saw anyone. You know, you'd, you'd have to work really hard all year and then you didn't get to see each other during the tour. So you really didn't know what each other did. And now we do. Um, so that's what we're asking for. We're asking for money to create a budget to, to advertise and bring people in. Now, the second Saturdays are also go f good for the city because these visitors that come visit, they're usually here for a meal or two. They shop while they're in Ojai. So we're actually bringing in uh, people who don't need to stay overnight. One of the challenges with our big tour is October is a great wedding month and there's no place to stay. So without the Airbnbs, a lot of people can only come up for the day. So anyhow, any questions? Yeah. Um, I did. Um, you said there are eight months. You do them for eight months. What months are those? January through August. Because I have a problem. You know, I do the, we, we were talking about the color calendar, and I'm very confused about what months you do them and what months you don't. I'm, what months you don't. So it's hard so for me we to do list them, them. We do them from January to August because we actually have, if, if we were going to do them all year long, uh -huh. uh, then some people would double up. You know, they get two showings. Um, the second Saturdays are also really great for our artists in terms of being able to sell their work because, again, when you have six to 12 uh, studios, it's a much different experience than competing against everyone else. Right. So uh, to make it, to make double, you know, if some people had, some areas had double months, then it would be, you know, maybe get competitive again. Right. Okay. And we also need some downtime to prepare yeah. for the big tour. <laughs> yeah, Andy. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I was, there's one question about the budget, but then I was going to ask specifically about the marketing, but on the budget, I'm looking at it looks like communications has a cost of seventy five thirteen, and I just wonder what, what what's communications versus like publicity. I had that question too. Um, you might not know. Oh wait a second. Um, is that the second. It's page two of two of the profit and loss. You know what? I don't. Oh, here we go. Um, well, the budget that you're looking at, the profit and loss, is for really hasn't accounted for anything for Second Saturdays. Okay. This is the budget that we've used for our big tour. And in terms of, you were asking about... Or just what communications meant. Just, I mean, what, yeah, just what that, what that line item is. Uh, communications, the website? Is it, it the one? No, the uh, website the, is a subset of it. Uh, so the 75, okay. He's talking about this one, Pam. Oh, it's the one right below it. Exhibits non-tour, reception non-tour. Well, it depends. Uh, I had trouble with the same thing. Okay, hold on a second. I may not know the answers to this, but I think I can figure it out. So communications, and then you're looking at Underneath communications? Oh, no, I was saying, so it looks like the website is, the total communications is, there, there's a website line. Yes. And then you see total communications. Yeah, 75, 13, 53. So. I think that number is all of the numbers it's the total immediately it's above the total that. Numbers okay. Okay. Of everything the numbers of the 75. And page two, communications, it's a carryover. The top mm. of page okay. two of two is a carryover from one of two at the bottom, consultant, 1750. You. Right. Thank you. Um, I guess my when I see the number of five thousand, what I was thinking is if <clears throat> if you wanted to have sort of a monthly presence in some of these magazines and mm -hmm. things like that, five thousand just doesn't seem like enough at all. Well, it's ten because we're matching. Yeah, we're going to match that. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's a start, it's right? A start. It, it's it a would start. help. Yeah. A lot. How, how much do you see going to a consultant versus? This is well, we actually cost. hired a consultant, yeah. um, and it cost us five thousand. Um, but now we need to implement. We, we used it this year. Yeah. Her this year it was Veronica Cole, uh -huh. um, and now we have a lot to implement. And then we also want to hire someone who can help us with PR. 
So the consultant this year will be more for PR. Right. And did you like what Veronica advised? She had a lot of really great suggestions, yeah. I have one. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sorry, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, do you at all uh, work with the Chamber of Commerce? Yes, we go to every chamber mixer and we give out, we, we do our spiel every month. I think Andy has seen me there. I was gonna, they give out raffle prizes, I every, mean like a tour. Yeah, every month we give out free tickets I mean in, to the tour. But in terms of co consultation for um, uh, the best way to do publicity, um, because they do that. We have not done that with them, mm -hmm. um, but thank you. I will look into that. We, we have spoken to Jamie about uh, he's talking about putting together welcome baskets to new residents, and they uh, used, the realtors used to do that, and yeah. they were great. Well, this That's year, the same idea. Ooh, I want to move again. This year we, <laughs> this year we gave away 500 tickets. Uh, they weren't that many that were turned in, but we gave everyone who bought a house in Ohio, we gave them free tickets to the tour. That's a great idea. Because you know, nice. the tour, the tour does many things above and beyond art consumption. You know, it allows people to see different areas of Ohio to get to know people in Ojai. Um, to know the community. To know the yeah. community. So it's a wonderful way, even if you're a non-art consumer, you're not really even interested in art, getting in and seeing how people live and, and what they do, it's, it's really informative. I had one question. Mm -hmm. On that same page, um, I, I guess I don't know how to read it either because it says total studio tour income, $447.66, and I find that hard to believe. Okay, well, this was pre-tour. This was not, we had not sold any tickets at this point. You asked for the, the um, most recent profit and loss statement. Oh, So, okay. because January through September, we hadn't really sold any tickets yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, that makes sense. If you asked us for one now, I think we'd be looking quite a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> and then outreach income. I didn't know what that was because it's a negative. So Okay, so outreach. Um, this year we got a grant from the Ojai Women's Fund and we created a program called Create. Uh, we did stop frame animation in the schools and we ran a, a deficit to the grant that we got. Oh, so, that's, that's <laughs> so what you that spent was. more than you? We spent more than we received. I got you. Okay, that answers that question. Thank you. All right. Okay. Great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm very I, impressed. I have to tell you, that's the best brochure yeah. I've ever seen because I used to have to sit and make a list like that yeah. and, and put everybody in their territory so I know where I was going. That's genius. I don't it's know really who did well that. Done. But that was well done. First <laughs> That was good, Pamela. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, thank you. And, and I, you have no idea how much I appreciate that because I got an email right as I was pulling up saying, that they didn't like the brochure because it's oh, color coded it. and it made it very confusing. Oh so no, no, it's so clear. It's so logical. You can't please everybody. No, you can't. Yeah. Right? Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you, Pam. Um, okay. Who's next? The music festival and the Bravo program. Hello, I'm Joanne Yabroff, and first of all, I would like to thank you all for what you do. It is so wonderful to live in a community that has such a rich presence of the arts all the way around. Um, I just filling in as of two hours ago, um, Laura Walter had to go back east for a funeral. Oh. Um, but I have been involved with Bravo for many, many years and I've also studied education through music with Laura for 20 some. And I've been involved in other camps and other locations upon which we modeled our camp here. So um, the Fine Arts Day Camp has three prongs. Uh, first of all, education through music is an interactive movement and singing and play joyful experience. Um, and then we have art projects that are very open-ended and messy. They're not little cookie cutter kinds of things. And then we have live storytelling, which is my beloved part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so the children are immersed in imagination and play and creativity. Um, all day long for a week. And it is just a delightful program to be a part of. Uh, some of the volunteers who have come to help us with registration have stayed the whole week. They've requested that we have a camp like this for adults. <laughs> They've said, can't you do it for a month? Um, so it's just a really delightful experience and we want to share it with kids in our community. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, 
It's an exemplary program, I yeah, think. Right. Well, thank you. I agree. Clearly written grant. Great right? clearly track written. record. <laughs> yeah. With Laura, I mean. Oh, she's amazing. A fantastic and this, program. And this was so easy to read. Yes. Oh. I, I have to tell you, yeah, it was very easy to read. I, I, I know you've been doing it for a lot of years flying, but. It's, well, it's, elsewhere, it's, not yeah, here. Yeah, so. but it's really not. No, I mean the music festival oh. in general. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, okay, Ray Powers. <coughs> Mending the hoop. Hello, friends. Hello. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I get to see Andy like twice today. <laughs> and Andy's seminar at the library today was incredible. Oh, it was no. on the Dao Te Ching. It was part of the Agora Foundation. That was really great. Thanks, man. Um, Do you want me to explain the project? Do you read it? Just, just, just given, yeah, we feel just we're given a overview, nutshell. right? Well, just part of what's not in there is is how this came about, because um, you know, in, historically, I, I'm usually bringing forward something musical, right. and this is, I went, It's not out of my wheelhouse, but it's not musical, and what occurred was. Um, First, I got an email from Ray Serino going, do you know anyone that has a wall that I can do a beaver mural? I said, I don't know. I'll keep it in the back of my mind. And then I was talking to River Salmon Joe. I always say her last name incorrectly. Um, you did. And uh, <laughs> well, she didn't I'm consistent. Call her Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we were just talking about bought mandala, and I said, yeah, it'd be really cool to have one of your mandalas on a wall. And she said, you know, it'd be really neat to have a, a, a removable mural that, that goes up just during certain times of festival times. And okay, so that was the second thing that happened a few days later. And then our new superintendent of the schools, Tiffany Morse, I was talking to her and she said, I have this wall on the preschool and I'd love to put a removable mural on it. And then, you know, three's the lucky number. And I went, okay, how many more sim sim symbols do I need here? So um, I met with Tiffany and um, had this concept of doing what I'm gonna call a legacy project because it will last forever as a removable mural on the um, places to grow um, preschool wall mm -hmm. that would also function as an outdoor classroom about the watershed and key keystone species in the area um, and would be removable for when chaparral ever gets leased we can take it and move it somewhere else um, the the concept of the mural and it, 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 it was the light bulb that went off for me because I used to live in the area below the dam. There's a lot of energy around Matillaha Dam being removed. Was, okay, what would it look like with complete regeneration of that area pre-1948 when the dam was built? So I had this concept of let's, let's do a mural where the dam is deconstructed and the river is regenerated with the beaver that used to be there as the keystone species. Because where we have beaver, the water gets to slow, s spread, and sink. And it helps all the, all the wildlife and plant life to mm -hmm. regenerate in that area. Um, and the salmon have pools to come and rest in. So um, in further discussion regarding the mural, which is 30 feet by 16 feet high is um, Tiffany mentioned they were already looking at uh, re-landscaping the front area there because it's just all dirt. Good. <laughs> um, and she's working with some people on that. I said, well, what if we take the mural and extend it out into 3D and do kind of a faux watershed and bring in some rocks and some water capturing elements and then build, build a cob bench that looks like the shape of a beaver and people can sit and you know, look at the mural. And then the schools could bring the kids in and learn about watershed and regeneration, where our water comes from. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It fits right into the, um, 
emergency climate, um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's called change, but the emerging climate actions that the city is um, working hard to do in the new mobilization mm -hmm. committee, um, the land conservancy, it just ties in so many mm -hmm. different threads of what's already happening and uh, what, what the Center uh, for Regenerative Agriculture is already doing in the schools and um, um, Once Upon a Watershed. So what it does is tie all that together into some public art. The children will help create it. Um, I do have a, a team of artists assembled and I'll bring in some more. And um, I think that's what I have to say about it. I, we, we get it, okay, great. Yeah, well, I just so wanna say, it's, it sounds fabulous. It's very exciting. Yeah. Um, questions? Fabulous. Just what I see you say there's gonna be a further fundraising effort, so this is, if, if you were to get five here, it gets matched by OUSD, so there's 16 still to raise. Yes. So what are, any plans for that? Well, uh, I have some plans. Uh, I've spoken to one person recently who said IBM has a fund that's called Resource Legacy Fund mm. that goes into environmental things, and they've received money from them. Um, so that's one place I'm going to look. Um, also, um, as I experienced when I, I did Valley of the Moon, and we've had that conversation, was I, I discovered during that process that different corporations do matching funds for their employees. So people that I know that may work for Apple or Patagonia or whatever, if they donate, the, the corporation will match that. So I, yeah, there's, there's, I think just within the community, we may do a fundraiser. Um, there's a lot of interest and a lot of support uh, for our environment and the nature that surrounds us and this paradise we live in. And I think we're all kind of pointing that direction to create create um, um, some rejuvenation of, of what's been lost. I have a question. And Linda has a question. Okay, Michael, go, go ahead. ahead. Um, I, I was a little puzzled because the public, especially students, will be invited to help create the mural. Given the fact that it's being done in conjunction with the school district, is there no way that students could definitely be included in the process of creating and painting the mural and oh, installing sure. the mural? Oh, for sure. That might have been my languaging there, but there's definitely going to be an invitation and the students who want to come. Um, I mean. I need some professional artists to design and, and paint it. Yeah. But certainly there's gonna be aspects of, of children painting and kids in the dirt and helping with the cob especially, which is playing with mud and sculpting it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, that's a, a that's a must, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Okay. But the other part of that is Lisa, or Lisa, River does the mandala with, they include children when they do that. Of course, so she's yes. had lots of experience with it, I know. For and Lisa. lots of yes. contact. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. And um, Vera as well, who has done done you know programs in the school systems mm -hmm. with art and, and kids. Um, I have one suggestion, which is, and then I have a question. But the suggestion was, if you're going to do landscaping, oh, High Trees has a program right now that they got a grant for. It's called uh, Shade for Ohio's Children, and they would probably help you out with some of the landscaping oh, needs. Great. Okay. And well, landscaping is not part of our grant. It's something Tiffany is already working on as part of the okay, school. Okay, well, you might pass it on because I, I know that's yeah. And I have, another, I have another suggestion um, in terms of the uh, regenerative aspect of this and the watershed and all that. Uh, were you planning on just getting a little consultation from Dr. David White? Who is oh, oh, yeah, yeah. But I, I also think... He knows the science of all I, of this. I think... Um, and, and don't quote me on this, but I believe the school district's already working with Watershed Progressive, with Regina Hirsch and, and, oh, okay. and Asia. Yeah. Um, and Asia. <laughs> um, I just want to get the science Beulah. guys in there. So she actually, I believe, has a, a, a one of her doctorate candidates she teaches at USC yeah. already, okay, great. already surveying the area for the landscaping right. and doing a whole whole project great. there. Okay. Okay. So we want our part, our, our right. kind of... Uh, um, our watershed shed landscape that will come off the mural right. to really gracefully integrate right. with whatever they're going to do with, right. the, gotcha. with the rest of great. rest of the landscape. Okay. Is, it, is it safe to say, Ray, that if you don't, we don't, you don't? Is this going to even if you get our grant money, will will this happen? 
Do you think it's doable? I mean, because so even you'd have if to, you wait, you sit, you ask. We give you the grant money. Yeah. Are you confident that you can raise the additional sixteen thousand yeah. dollars? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have I have a question, and it's a big one. <laughs> Because we don't have the mural ordinance in, in, because that's what immediately I th guess I thought this is a great. I mean, I really, it's exciting. I know we're not. Can I, can I speak to that? Yeah. 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 Is your is your question just about the mural How is ordinance? It affecting or? our grant? Yeah. Well, we had a discussion about that, and I've actually communicated with Ray about that. And right now, um, I'm in uh, back and forth with city manager Vega and Joe and others as to whether or not the mural ordinance would apply because school districts are exempt from the public art ordinance. Uh -huh. And it's going to rest at this point in time. Things change. But it would rest on um, whether or not the mural ordinance becomes a subset of the public art ordinance or is an ordinance on its own. If it's an ordinance on its own, it doesn't address exemptions. However, we may now realize that we need to add exemptions to that mural ordinance. So the mural ordinance was approved, I might as well announce that right now, uh, by the city council. Mm. And it is now in the hands of staff and legal uh, council to come to its final form. So all this is in progress. If it turns out they are not exempt and they do have to apply through the mural ordinance, pretty much what Ray would, have, would do would be to take his wonderfully written grant and staple it to the top of the mural application okay, and give it I to mean. us at the January meeting if, yeah. it's, if, the, if the application is ready by then. The and, right and if it turns out, we'll probably just award the grants contingent on your completing that application. I really don't think it's going to okay. be a, that was my a, question. an issue. Okay. But it was a great question, great question. Linda. Yeah. Because yeah. I got yeah, to say all that. We had a couple of meetings this week about that. <laughs> yeah, I was curious about the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I and I will keep you. You know, I'll keep you up to date as I find out what what the ruling is. Okay. And uh, Michael, I hope at some point you and I and James can talk about should this be a yeah. subset or not. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ray. That's it. Thanks, Ray. Thanks. Great, great idea. You oh yeah. You threw me for a idea. hoop. Super. A loop. <laughs> hoop. <laughs> because you're always music, and now you're like visual arts. You threw me for a hoop. A loop, a loop hoop. Okay. Never mind. All right, one more. Okay, and there. then Kim. Shopping at the bit. Townies. Townies Inc. Inc. Yep, the Townies Inc. Uh, good evening. Um, incredibly talented Arts Commission, and hello, my fellow grant applicants. Um, it is an extraordinary thing to live in a town like this, where there is just. Um, it's just so many different kinds of arts supported by so many different organizations and you guys. So thank you for all of that. Uh, I am Kim Maxwell of Kim Maxwell Studio and the Townies Podcast and the Townies Inc. And for 25 years, I have been launching stories loudly and unapologetically into the world from our little fishbowl of a town from my little studio just down the road yonder. Um, and last year, um, you gave us an incredibly generous grant that made it possible for us to launch those stories beyond the four walls of our studio on the Townies podcast, which has surpassed 35,000 plays. So thank you so much for wow. that. Uh, which brings me to the reason why I'm here tonight, and it is the Townies Out Loud, a solo performance development program which will be an annual program starting in 2020, aimed at developing full-length, one-person plays written and performed by Ojai Valley community members. The program itself will, I'm, I'm hitting my P's really hard on this. You think I know that from the podcast. <laughs> um, I just turn to the side. The program itself will consist of weekly one-on-one -on -one coaching, rehearsal, and dramaturgy with the selected solo artist to develop the full-length solo show. This show will be carefully workshopped, rewritten, shaped, and sewn together into a play structure, then informed by a team of professional theater designers who will help conceptualize the show for the stage. At the end of the program, our townies out loud artists will receive a workshop production of their solo show at Kim Maxwell Studio. These culminating performances will be followed by talkbacks with the audience and the artist to draw back the curtain of the creative process, inviting audience members into that process. 
I'm very excited to say that our inaugural artist will be a longtime Ojai resident and storyteller for many years, Trudy Froelich, who, through her natural comedic sensibilities and fierce love of musical theater, will tackle difficult subjects that our society is grappling with today, such as addiction, family dysfunction, clinical anxiety, and a whole lot more. Once completed as a part of a community partnership with the Ojai Playwrights Conference, the solo work will receive a highly coveted invitation to be considered by the Ojai Playwrights Conference Reading Committee for a slot in the annual Summer Festival. Previous playwrights at OPC have included MacArthur Geniuses, Pulitzer Prize winners, Tony, Obie Award winners, and a whole lot more. To be considered at this level not only elevates the individual solo artist and their work, but also the Ojai Arts Commission and the City of Ojai as it calls local issues and artists to an internationally revered stage. Truth is, our fabulous and wonderful little town is growing in population and popularity. And with that comes benefits and challenges. We want to capitalize on the benefits of a growing national attention and increased tourism, harnessing this to promote a type of tourism that goes beyond consumerism, taking a real interest in the real people and endeavors of this wonderful, unique little town. We are a town that displays immense support for one another. This program is an invitation to Ojai's visitors to join us in the very thing that makes Ojai special. Each year, the Townies Out Loud will bring a new element, new elements, new ideas, new issues, and styles to the stage with each new solo artist tackling subjects such as racial and gender inequality, LGBTQIA plus rights, immigration, chronic illness, and the fight against climate change. Over time, we would like to sustainably grow the number of solo works developed per year. We envision a future where we could create a culture similar to that of the fringe festivals in Edinburgh, Hollywood, Washington, DC, Vancouver, and more. As is our mission through this program, the townie aims to connect people one story at a time. Stories are connected to the brain's production of oxytocin, a chemical associated with feelings of empathy. And in today's hyper-polarized society, nothing is more valuable nor more important than the opportunity to connect with someone else's circumstances. Townies Out Loud will develop local voices supplying these solo artists with the skill set and the confidence to share their work in and beyond our valley, knowing that they are well equipped to represent the town that provided support and opportunity from the very beginning. Thank you so much for your time and your attention, and I would be honored to take your questions. Yes? I have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. it's, um, so, how, what is the selection process for how you pick your solo artist? Um, this year, because we wanted to really keep costs down, we chose somebody uh, based on, well, number one, they have a tremendous body of work already moving towards us, so it keeps the amount of hours that we have to put in down. Uh, it's also somebody, a lot of the artists that we're looking at featuring in following years are really young, up-and-coming artists. One of them is in high school, one of them is in college, and some of them are just out of college. And they don't have the kind of lifestyle that allots them to put as much time right now into a project like this without pay. And so we chose specifically Trudy because Trudy did not need to be paid. She lives locally and her schedule is entirely flexible. And especially in this first year where we're establishing the template, because we want to make that rock solid and we're understanding how long everything takes and what we need to do, we needed somebody incredibly flexible with a, a stealthy amount of a body of work. And because she's Actually, because she's been like writing in, for over 20 years, she has a lot more than somebody who is in high school or college. There's just a lot of stuff there. And, and just one other thing. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for that. <laughs> um, just one other thing. Um, it, um, if because it, it says ten thousand dollar grant, it's, um, it's you know it's a it's a hefty grant. So yeah. Um, so what if, if you weren't um, awarded the full amount? What sort of things would you have to curtail about your? 
Um, well, we'd have to take a look, in. honestly, and see how much we were awarded because the project okay. is going to go through one way or the other. I've sure. never not finished something ever in my so it will happen. But um, we would have to go back and take a look at the budget and see. Like one of the programs we're really excited about is the one dollar student ticket price, but that's you know that's a significant chunk of income that would come out of that. But we also have already in place a $5,000 matching grant. We're working on more of that. And we also have our end of year campaign coming up um, that we'll be launching. We'll probably be sending out, you'll be getting letters because <laughs> I know where you live. Um, and so they'll be coming in the mail probably within the next couple of three weeks. And um, as well as we, we actually just em embarked on a strategic planning process for a three, five and 10 year plan. So. It will happen. I just don't know. I would have to honestly take a look at the program and see. Um, um, honestly, probably the bagel brunch thing would maybe have to take a back seat. No more locks. You get schmear. That's it. Cream cheese. <laughs> no toasted bagel for you. No bagel. <laughs> no bagel for you. Just a schmear. Yeah, no, just a schmear Trave. on your hand. Thank you. I have Thank a you. question. I, 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 would, I, I see that the grant request and I see the matching funds that you have here, so 17. Mm -hmm. But I, I couldn't find the project budget how, how much the whole thing is costing it might be here and I, I couldn't like, no I didn't see that that okay. we I do have a whole project yeah. budget okay. and, and a big like a, a breakout but I was okay. trying to um, adhere by the, the sheet that was given okay. to us and so I do have a big breakout on a, a very attractive Google Doc which is color-coded um, I guess my question is more like is it, how, do you, if you know what that I don't need the breakdown I was saying is there a lot more that's needed than these two things here, the 10,000 and the 17? Um, there is some, yeah. I mean, right now, um, uh, I would like to be able to pay the, 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 myself, the director, the dramaturg, um, more than what we currently have in the budget for that. But that's one of the things that, like, honestly, it's like the first thing to go by the wayside. It always so, is, yeah. Pardon? It, it always is. Said yeah. It always is. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? A couple of questions. Yes. Michael. Uh, Two questions, really. One is, why only six performances? I mean, if this is a local writer who is you know, well-known and so on mm -hmm. and so forth, and if income is a question. factor and your space is small, you can't mm -hmm. hold many people, it's true. why only six performances? Um, I, we wanted to commit to six performances because we knew that we could sell that out wall to wall. But what I'm sort of anticipating is more like the reaction that we had with Doug Motel, Motel was great, when we yeah. run, ran the solo series. But you know what? You don't want to get cocky and be like, that's going to happen again. So for sure, I know that I can sell out those two weekends. And then what we thought we would do, because it's always better um, to extend a show sure. than it is to plan a longer run and then have people go, oh, I'll wait till the last weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and so we decided specifically to start with two weekends and then extend from there. And I think it's going to be really popular. Trudy's been around for a yeah. long time. People love her and support her, and it's a really important issue. It's also very funny. She's very, very funny. So. One, one other question. Mm -hmm. you, you speak of uh, a highly coveted invitation to be considered Yes. For a slot. I mean, that's pretty iffy. Yeah. It is. Uh, what, it's what is the likelihood, <laughs> A, of getting the invitation mm -hmm. and B, being selected? Well, let's see. How the Ojai Playwrights Conference works is <coughs> they have an online submission process where you're allowed to submit like two sentences. And then the committee looks at it and then they ask for like 10 pages and they'll read 10 pages. And then after that, they'll ask for the whole script, which um, this, whoever is our, it will uh, go over that process and actually their entire script will be read and considered by the reading committee and by Robert Egan. Um, I can't be guaranteed because there okay. are, they read over 500 plays. There are only six slots um, for those highly coveted positions. Um, but last year, the play that I worked on with James Morrison made it to the main stage of the Ojai Playwrights Conference. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and it was a wonderful, wonderful play. And his quote is actually in the in the grant. Um, Robert uh, is super supportive of it, but as he he's very also protective of the conference itself. Sure. And it has to. There's all there's the the theme of the conference, but then every year there's another theme. And so the play would have to fit in to make meet all of those requirements. But there is a thing that they have that is uh, the cabaret night and Robert said that he would um, make sure to read and take a look and that most likely will be a very secure position that they would be included um, in the cabaret night with the other main stage playwrights of Great. that year. Okay, thank you. And just one quick question yes. that's not really related to this but is there any chance that you know James Morrison would be 
doing that performance again because ah. that was a very hard ticket to score. <laughs> that was a hard ticket to score. Yeah. Um, I will talk to James and find out. I mean, I don't know where he's going from here. I know that there's a lot of interest. I know that there's a lot of companies that are talking about it. So the chances of having it here would be kind of small. But um, it might. a couple of the companies that are looking at it are in L.A. and down in the South Coast. And so if it's there, I will let you know. And then we can have a, um, a field trip. And we'll go down and see <laughs> his play again. And I'm sure that he would love to probably do another uh, reading of it. Um, here in Ojai, like an informal reading. And so, yeah, and I can also, because Robert's going to direct that play, and I can ask Robert if we could have one more, you know, reading here in Ojai, or maybe a couple of them, so you have a chance to see it. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you very much. Oh, I had one more question. Oh. <laughs> I love Doug Motel. It was great. Yes. Um, and I'm looking at the costs, and I, at the because it's 10000 right? We mm -hmm. all look at that. Um, program, production, and exhibition costs. Those are just for, like, programs and... No, the program it, uh, itself, I mean, the, the, the physical program that people look at is under printing. The program itself is what it costs to develop it over the course of a year. Oh. Yeah, it's, it includes all of the production ex exhibition costs. It's included in that is... Um, I have to take a look because I actually don't have that with me, but there, there's a, I have a breakout if you want to see it. I have a breakout of what all of those costs are. Yeah, because you have artistic personnel and then you have administrative personnel and then you have the program production exhibition costs. So mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. Uh, some, I mean, I have to go take a look at the because I don't remember, but it's on a Google Doc and I know that it has to do with, um, with uh, rent and a number of other um, costs. Okay. So theater rent, like, and yeah. so it's just the one person that's doing the play. It's just yes. one each time you do it. One so each time, and then we want to try to grow it sustainably this. from there. We want to start with one this year, be really successful, establish the manual, um, so that we can bring other people up, and then see how many we think we can do in a year. We'd okay. like to do more than one. We'd like to do, well, I'd like to do five, um, but you know, a lot of people in hell want ice water, <laughs> um, and so I, I think it'll probably be more like the next year would be like two, and then we would just experiment with. Um, continuing to, to develop the program from there. Um, okay. Artistic personnel, $2,500. Who would be the artistic personnel? You said Trudy is doing it. Yep, She's Trudy is doing it for it. free. It would be myself and uh, Lily Brown, who is a dramaturg, and then there's another dramaturg from Los Angeles. Okay, so that would be like your time as a, an instructor then, I guess. Or but more like a director. A director. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this is sort of outside of the realm of instructing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Okay, that wraps it up. So, um, yeah, yeah. Sure, right. Yes, go ahead. It's just for my own clarification, because um, I've heard a, in a, with a, a couple conversations you had with the grant applicants, you've said, well, you're asking for $10,000, or I, is the, was the limit, I was under understanding the the limit to ask was five thousand for a grant. There's no limit. No There's limit. No limit. No. Okay, where did I read that? We've no idea. No, no. What were you? Let us know when you find out. You were right? under that understanding too, weren't you? What'd you have for dinner? No, Brian. No, Brian too. I don't know where that figure. Was it ever that way in the past? No. No. That okay? That's. Wow, well, okay. I must have made that up. I mean, do, 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 our do, project's do, do, a $24,000 project, and I asked, you know, for what I asked for based on what but keep I in was mind, pretty sure I read <laughs> somewhere. Keep in mind that we have eight uh, applicants, and we have $24,500 to give out. Yes. So even if you had asked for 24000 Got it. But I just wanted to get a clarification, so yeah. now in no, the future no. I know there's... You know, no. maybe, maybe... I thought there was a seat... Yeah. Maybe it came from kind of like an average, somebody maybe one time Somebody said, the average. Yeah, yeah. But there's no limit. Never okay. Okay, yeah. good. Oh, well. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So thanks, good. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Wish I'd known. Good night. Wish I'd known. <laughs> um, okay, so okay. next month we will discuss. Next month we will discuss and make allocations. In the interim, I'm going to be emailing everyone kind of a the do's and don'ts list about these grants that I should have included with your packet. 
but I somehow overlooked it. So I'm just going to email them. It's okay. Them We've got a month. That's fine. Yeah. I thought that was very clear. It was very clear. Yeah. 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 It was just okay. some, you know, like things like I assigned everyone a grant, but you're not the advocate for, you know, we right. don't right. advocate. No, we're not advocate. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, stuff like this that. Is anyway. New people. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Well, well done, Marcy. Thank you. It's a complicated yeah, that was program. Great. Well done. Okay, um, let's move on. We have uh, much more to do. The awards. Uh, we have two awards, and this is. It's okay with me. No, he's got uh, the lifetime. awards next. Awards is next. Awards I wanna, are next. I want to oh. get through that. Oh, I thought you were done with um, artist mentor. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. We got uh, We're moving to. Number C in our gotcha. agenda, item C. Sorry. And for Andy's, uh, mm -hmm. to clue you in, Andy, with that, yep. we have the two grants, one of which is the Lifetime Achievement, which we do every year. And you've been sent, uh, everyone has been sent a list of those who have received it in the past. Yep. And bio information on people that we discussed last year uh, before we eventually chose someone uh, for the thing. So that's one grant, and as I said, we do that every year, and it then is approved by the city council, and at a council meeting, the mayor awards that grant, that, uh, that award. Mm -hmm. The Hope Fraser Award is uh, named in honor of a woman who was a member of the commission for many years and who also was a strong contributor locally to the cultural life of the community. And that's an occasional award. And we did award that last year uh, to Nigel Chisholm, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're under no obligation to, to do that this year. And given the fact that we have new members and a very full set of projects that we're embarking on, my suggestion would be that we hold off on that until next year. But for this year, the Lifetime Achievement Award, and again, because we have new members, what I would suggest is that everybody look at the list that came in your packet today mm -hmm. and then think if there's anyone else that you feel really should be considered. And then before the next meeting, everybody send me three names. If we have three. Mm -hmm. If you have three, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of great people in here. Yeah. yeah. There's so many. It's, it's, it will be hard to choose, but... A maximum of three names. Mm -hmm. And at our next meeting, then, we will sort and sift. And if, for example, we get three people who nominate the same person and three people who nominate someone else, then maybe we'll just jump to those who already have strong support and, and weigh that in the balance and come to a decision. Does mm -hmm. that seem like a, yeah. Yeah, a fair time. and flexible process? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That is what we'll do. You know, uh, something yes. you might want to send to everybody, because uh, we have new people, Yeah. if they don't have a handbook, would be um, the criteria. She, I think he did. I think is is, I is think this that, the criteria? Yeah, that's here? it. Yeah. Oh, OK, yeah. so the criteria. So yeah, sorry, that's there. That yeah, it's OK. That's what I get for taking a nap. That's a nap. dangerous, yeah. taking naps. That's a habit. There it is, <laughs> criteria. You know, you know what else would be? Nice. If in the record we corrected, um, this Ruth Hemming is supposed to be for the art center, and it says Ruth Hemming, and that's it was for the art center. What she she accepted it for the art center, just like the music festival doesn't say who who accepted it for them. Okay. So I really that. think that sure. should be corrected. Sure. It's public record because people take note are of that, not going to know don't. who that. I mean, in first future years, it's for the art center. Yeah. Okay. Ohio oh, Art that's Center. A good idea. Yeah. Oh, Maybe so can we make those okay. corrections? Okay, we can make Joe? that correction, yes, indeed. All right, now we're going to move to public art. That's going to take a lot of time. No. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. All right, um, then let's, let's go I forward. We can whip through this pretty quickly. Okay. So I'm going to start let, off. Let, we, let me begin, though, and again, this is for Andy's benefit, but also for the public at large. Um, the money that we derive for public art comes from developers. If they pass a certain stage in the cost, then they have to make a contribution to the city's public art fund. And there is a considerable amount of money in that fund. But the critical thing is working with these developers 
and also occasionally projects that the Art Commission generates as public art. And I just want to compliment Christine, the chair of the Public Art Committee, because this is a complex bag of worms, and I won't mention any names, but sometimes the developers take so much care and feeding. Uh, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. But anyway, Christine, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, thank you for the onward. opportunity. Because, yes. Um, did I turn that off? I did. Thank you for the opportunity, because I really have to say that um, I, you know, I, I, well, it will take long if I tell you this whole story, so I won't tell you the whole story. But um, I didn't know I was going to literally fall in love with, with doing public art, but I have. It's just uh, exciting. And I think we've changed the culture in that developers uh, now just hear what a fabulous opportunity it is to do this, and, and that's how they respond. I'm going to pass out, well, even before I go to the utility um, the public art tour guide, because I'd do that first. Sure. Um, we talked about murals, uh, so I don't think I have to make any, unless anyone has a question on that, I think we can just go on to yeah, this. Yeah, we have to go on okay. and work, work out right. the mural so issues. Let me, yeah. let, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Cool, you've got a mock-up? So I have a mock-up. Yes. And um, what I want to uh, walk you through, because I did not make copies, we actually have two mock-ups. And the mock-up that you're not getting, let me show this to you, is what I call the um, three-page mock-up. And it's based on um, the brochure that we used as our guiding principle, the ad hoc committee. And it, it spread out like this. Well, and then you can see the other side. Oh, there we go, and it folds up. So it looks like the other one, which is, if you open it up, you can see this one is much more concise, and it's only two pages. Now, what I've been doing <laughs> over the last few months when we were when waiting to meet, I met with uh, Bobby Balderman, Carlos Grasso, Anka Colbert, Colleen McDougall, and the ad hoc committee. Um, and uh, from Bobby Balderman, Carlos, and Anka, we got um, feedback on what it would cost and what they would bid uh, to do the job. Uh, all of them uh, said that if we do the three-page layout, the one that you don't have a copy of, that it would be much more expensive than if we do a two-page layout. So then I got to work and to try to see if I could get this down to two pages. Now. <clears throat> the final brochure won't look like this. This is just a placeholder. Right. It's the information, it's the thumbnails. If you look over in the corner on the inside of the downtown tour, that map is a Colleen McDougall map, and Colleen um, is willing to do not only the map, but also the cover. And what she's talking about is that the cover would cover all three of these pages and the writing would be on top the way you often see in brochures. So she's really into this. And what she would be cartooning would be um, the iconic public art pieces, which she now has a list of. So it's very exciting. Um, the ad hoc committee met and went over the bids and unanimously want to recommend to you um, Carlos Grasso. Now, Carlos, we worked with Carlos before. He was the, um, what do you call him, the a layout artist for our architecture book. For the architecture yeah, for the book. For the architecture book. So we know he's got an impeccable eye. Here's three copies of his bid for you guys and three for you guys. He was also, and, and, and this is very important, he was very easy to work with. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, and I will tell you that I'm going to be working side by side with um, Colleen and, and, and Carlos. And Colleen and I, She's awesome. copacetic to work with her. And Carlos and I have history because I actually was the um, editor the copy editor for an artist's book that was published. Jim Menzel Joseph, who, by the way, has passed, um, wrote a book called Art and Survival in the 21st Century, and Carlos did the layout for that, and he is really great to work with. And so I have experience working with him and he with me. 
Um, although that didn't really feed into the decision uh, uh, to, to recommend him to you. Now, if you look at the estimate, his services as designer, and it includes everything. It includes doing the QRs, which I'll talk to you about in a minute because I forgot to mention that. It includes working with the printers, and it's it's all inclusive, and I think it's so amazingly reasonable, $700. It's incredibly yeah. reasonable. Incredibly reasonable. But, you know, he is getting all the pieces. Sure. So it's, and they're amazing how fast they are. They just go, ch -ch 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 -ch, like that, and they come up with this, you know, and I can do it all in a row. <laughs> That's about as far as I can go. Um, Colleen uh, will do both the map and the outside cover, all, the whole spread of it, for 600 So our cost for personnel would be the um, six and seven. And then what I would like to recommend to all of you, um, we're looking probably at a run of 2,000, although the committee is gonna get a little deeper into that and come back with a recommendation to all of you in November. We're probably looking at 2,000 to $2,500 for the um, run itself. So we think if we ask tonight that you approve Carlos and Colleen and a $6,000 budget that we will come in under that budget and we won't have to be coming back to you and saying, oh, you know, we need another 200, oh, we need another, we, this came up, that that will cover it. And I think to be able to do it for that amount of money is, is pretty it's, remarkable. I really thought it would be a lot it's more. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So that's very what reasonable. I'd like to propose. I do want to tell you about the QRs because it's very, very exciting. And this came from Bobby Balderman. She so wanted to do this project, but her health is just not going to permit her to do it. You know, Bobby used to be a member of the Arts Commission. And she was so helpful when she looked at what I had done, which at the time was the six page, and she said, oh, it's going to be so expensive. She said, why don't you use QRs? To which I said, well, what's a QR? Well, a QR is that little box, and you download a free app onto your phone, and you just scan this little box, and boom, it opens up to wherever you want it to open up. So. We have three tours. We have the downtown tour, which you see in this little mock-up brochure. And then we have an East City tour, and we have a West City tour. But rather than adding a whole page, we're going to make these the QRs. So inside the cover of the one you have, you will see that it talks about that, the East City Tour and the West City Tour having QRs. We also are going to use QRs if you open up to the downtown map. I'm so excited about this, as you can tell. They're not on here, because I don't know how to do that, but intermittently in here, like for example, after you have um, gone to the Ojai Valley Museum Courtyard, which is B on the first page, just above that will be a little QR box, because there are also QRs that we call along the way. And if somebody wants to take a side trip and check out the Iron Archway at Ebello Plaza, they can do that. And there are several of those. When you get over to Libby Park along the way, the Lion's Head Fountain, the um, Gardenia Fountain, the Band Shell with the RTK tile and other elements. So you'll open it up, it'll go right to that, it'll describe it. So anyone who wants to lengthen their tour can do it uh, with QRs or not. So we're really excited about that. I think the great benefit of this, in addition to it opening up the possibility of people getting more information and being able to explore more, I'll take a is that this is gonna make it more attractive to the sort of hip, younger audience who are saying, oh, I can use my cell phone. Oh, sure, okay, and yeah. let's and, do it. And who's hosting the it, it, it's a link, right? It's like a numerical uh, it code. It will be. It'll be the website. It'll on the be website. Our website. That's what I was going to say. I'm hoping that one of our new members, I understand, knows all about this QR stuff. No, I wasn't. We're looking, looking at you, Andy. We're looking at you, Andy. <laughs> but Carlos knows just how to do this. He does it all the time. When I said to Carlos, do you know anything about QRs? He went, oh yeah, and he pulled out his phone, and he went, oh, just like this, see, and they're free, and I went, oh my God, this is like too good to be the, true. The good Welcome thing, to the I was gonna century. say, the good thing about it is it will drive people to our website. Exactly. And it will yeah. also, do, well, they won't go to the website. So in other words, if the QR is, um, uh, it's gotta live uh, somewhere. Where let's say it? the Lion's Head Fountain, and you scan the uh, QR for Lion's Head Fountain, right. what will pop up on your screen is Lion's Head Fountain, so you don't have to toggle around. 
No, uh, I mean, but but maybe on the back we could have a QR that goes right to the website. Oh, we could. Yes. Not related yes. to. Oh, great yes. idea. Yes. Will you write yes. that down for me? Because Doesn't the QR have to live that's somewhere? That's a great idea. We'll add that. Yes, so it'll QR live on like, our website, right? Like back yeah. here, where all yeah. this stuff is. Yes, visit the we'll, so we'll, we'll the website. Get to QR. Our website. Great idea. Yeah. And please, if you think of anything else, I mean, it's just so exciting when I talk to everybody about all the ideas they have. This ad hoc committee. Sammy is on that committee, Jackie Clark, and, um, uh, oh God, uh, Connie Campbell. And uh, we lost Elise because she, she uh, I think, has moved from Ohio, which is such a loss. But she worked like a bear on the committee before she left and gave us complete permission to use the information in Fountains and Sculptures of Ojai. And I wrote all this, but I could not have done it without that book, and a lot of it is plagiarized, and uh, Colleen is okay. I mean, um, Elise is okay with that, and she also came up with photographs from her book that she sent me in the right kind of, you know, pixel and all that stuff. So we have the thumbnails. We have the written, all of it. Um, it's, I didn't bring it all tonight, but I have it all. I'm going to be meeting with them if you all approve this tonight. And they're going to get working. And we're going um, for, hopefully, a print in February and then a, a, a rollout docent-led um, tour, downtown tour, which I will lead. The inaugural uh, tour. For, cool. uh, City Council, you guys, the ad hoc, will invite all the artists, chamber, newspaper, blah, blah, blah. And cool. I think it'll be, and we're, we're going to try to end it at Sane Living and see if they'll do a little reception for us because oh, yeah. it'll highlight their piece. Good. Good. So it's, I'm just so excited. Well, I move that we approve a $6,000 allocation from the Public Art Fund to support the tour brochure. I have second. Second, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Any further discussion? Oh, I have one, one suggestion. Question. When you're deciding how many to print, um, you might want to talk to Hallie down at, um, because they produce that map that they use, and she could give you an idea how many quantity they went through. Yes, those maps. yes, that's she great. That's a, a great idea too. too. Hmm? Reasonable printing company. Yeah. Yeah. These are very reasonable yeah. prices. Very reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. They're both good printers. You know, yeah. and that'll all unfold. And as it does, well, I always come back at a meeting with anything the ad hoc, uh, yeah. because they don't they don't make decisions; they just make recommendations. But that's yeah. good. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 But we need to also no. approve Carlos and Colleen. Uh, I move that we approve Carlos and Colleen as the two graphic artists engaged in the project. Second. Is there a second? We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Bingo. Okay, fabulous. Um, so you said it didn't take so long. great. No. Okay. All right. It's very exciting. Okay. It's happening. Now, the next thing. Utility boxes. I'm really sorry, I'm going to have to excuse myself. Joe, are you going to run the, you have to leave? I have to leave. I've got to pick up my daughter from Santa Paula. We well, you're not allowed. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Yes, All right, so we, do we have a majority like, still? Yeah, we still, oh, have we still we do. have a quorum. All right, because we're going to be making a decision here. Okay. There is homework, so talk to me about that. I'm giving everybody homework. All right, okay. okay. I'll, yeah, All right. I'm sorry. I'll okay, that's okay. okay. Good luck with your daughter. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. All right, so the next thing, and you have a handout in your, and thank you, Joe, very much for Excuse me. having this ready. You have a handout, and it will follow along with the, um, uh, can I do the clicker? Or do you want to do the clicker for me? It's, it's in the. I can just say next if you want to do it. Yeah. I get easily confused. <laughs> okay, which one? forward that's back okay got it all right so um, what's been happening okay for the new people for the new person we adopted a utility box project which I'm sure you're familiar with the painted utility boxes yep. that you see in Ventura and other communities and the Arts Commission selected seven boxes um, in prominent place in the downtown corridor and then the next and so that was approved and the next job was for city staff to tell us who owns those boxes so we could find out what the deal is. So that's what we're going to go over now, is what we found out. So let's go to the next one. It made a buzzing sound and nothing happened. Well, I think it just helps uh, 
everyone to focus, but if he can't do it, we'll, we'll skip it. We'll give him a minute. Well, that's the, let's, yeah. I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna explain. Yeah, yeah. I'll answer that for sure. Okay, here we go. Maybe. Okay, oh, we got it. So thank you, Joe. So the first uh, set that we picked, or this is actually just one box, and it's on the corner of Maricopa Highway and um, uh, Carrillo, um, across from the high school. It turns out, as you see in the little white up there on the right, it says this is electrical service. I think it's for the Caltrans own street lights, but I'm not sure. Well, today I got through to staff and they are sure it is a Caltrans. Oh. So if in your packet, if you want to set that aside, because Caltrans is something that we have to apply for, and we've been told that the application process takes a while. So we can do that box, but we don't know how long it's going to take before Caltrans, you know, California, the whole state, processes the application. The next one is at the skate park. And this is definitely Caltrans owned. So I'm going to put it in the same pile, all the Cal Caltrans ones. And the third one coming up here is the other box at the skate park. And um, once again, today he got through to me and it's Caltrans owned. So we're going to put that on the Caltrans pile. And the next one, Caltrans which is on the corner of Signal and Ojai Avenue. So what I'd like to have happen here tonight is that we will all be okay with city going forward with applications for the Caltrans. Now the next one is an AT&T owned box, which is, oh, I'm so upset about this because this is the box on Montgomery by the gas station. I would have loved to have been able to do this. AT&T no, will not give permission to do a box, so everyone can take that one out of the pile. Next one, same thing here, Treasures of Ojai Walkway. This is an AT&T owned box. We're gonna take it out of the pile. See, there's a method to my madness here. Mm -hmm, I get it. Okay, next one. This one, by in the back of Jim and Rob's, which is such an eyesore, you can see this from the photograph with all the graffiti on it. This one is owned by Edison, and we're going to put this with the Caltrans pile. Edison also has an application procedure, but we don't think it's as long. We'll have to still do it, but we think it'll be faster. So that goes in its own pile, Edison pile. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that we have five boxes that we can do but it could take forever for four of them to even start because I can't write the PDF until I know what the utility company is requiring because that all goes in the PDF. So we put together an additional slideshow. Joe, if you go to the next one. And these boxes are owned by the city and they were ones that I did not take pictures of and didn't know about. So these boxes, we don't have to wait. We can just get going. Huh? The, Park. the first one, yeah, is Libby Park near the playground. Now, this is a tiny little box, and you can see in the back the playground over there, but that could be a really fun thing that to do, fun. theme yeah. it. So I'm going to put that in its own pile, and then the next one is Libby Park by the tennis courts. The picture isn't really great there, but it's a big, ugly green box. There's two boxes side by side. If you look at the next picture, that's just the green box, and the next picture, it's just the smaller white box. Surrounded by some shrubbery, we would probably want to have that cut back. They're on the pathway that leads up toward the bowl on the left side, and you'll see the tennis bleachers right behind them there. So I'm going to put all those, because they're city owned, in its own pile, and you will see that all together there are four city owned boxes. And if we take the four city owned and the two Edison, we could move forward with the city owned while we're letting the applications go through for Caltrans and Edison. But we could actually get going on this project. This, this is our get our feet wet project. And that's what I'm going to recommend to you is that we go ahead with these city owned boxes and do those as our first, like out of the gate. And then Maybe next year we come back and we've got the permission from Caltrans, we've got the permission from Edison, and we can add on and do another round if we were successful. 
I also want to point out so that everybody is really clear that there will be a public art jury and none of the boxes have to get done. If there aren't any applications that we feel are correct for that neighborhood, for the box itself, then we don't do that box. Mm -hmm. So it's the public art jury will bring forward to all of us their recommendations once they meet. Now that, that's your homework. Your homework is for next month to come with names of people who you think should serve on the public art jury. So I want to go over what you're going to do your homework on. We need two arts professionals, and one of them has to have public art experience. So for example, Susan Amend has public art experience. And I, I just throw her name out there because this really was her baby. From the time she really got the Arts Commission going, she always talked about, I want to do utility boxes. So, oh yeah. So two arts professionals, one with public art experience. Then we have one planning commissioner who serves on the public art jury. We have two community members at large. We have an artist, and then we have an arts commissioner. And next month, we'll talk about the makeup of that. And um, Michael said uh, that he would be willing to make the initial calls to the list of candidates to see who's interested and who's available. And then the Public Art Committee will come back probably in January with a slate of these people are available, they're interested, and this is who we think should, should be on that public art jury. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christine. Who was I after the well right before the one artist? All right, I'll go through the whole thing. Let's make sure you all members. got it. Community, community members. members. Two arts professionals, one with public art experience, one planning commissioner, two community members at large, and an artist, and then of course an arts commissioner. Okay. Yep. So um, what we need tonight then is for, and I think the easiest way to do this would be for all of you to just allow the public art committee to move forward with whatever of these selection of boxes that you saw tonight can be done. And I'm gonna be uh, working on the RFP, it's gonna come back to all of you, then it will go to the Public Art Committee, we'll make all the changes and suggestions, then I'll come back to you again. So you're involved in all of that as it goes along. Does that sound good? Yeah, I, would, I, I think a motion is in order. I will move that we authorize the Public Art Committee to move forward along the lines of what uh, Commissioner Golden has just has recommended uh, for the selection of boxes and the process that will follow. Is there a second? A second. second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good, and thank you again, Christine. This is great to, the way it's moving forward. Yeah. yeah. The other great thing about doing the city boxes first, I think, is it gives the community then a chance to weigh in mm -hmm. and to get some feedback right. because they're in very public right. locations. And then we go forward right. and build yep. on that. So that works. Yeah. 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 The park, yeah. it's They'll great. They'll get seen. Yeah. People will be able to, they won't be just and we may, by we, and we may get some that are themed to go with the music festival, themed to go with the playground. I and mean, it's going to be interesting to see what people come up with. Interesting yeah. to you never know. To create guidelines is right. going to be fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just one Joe? clarification point of order. Um, did Commissioner Gilman do the second? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. kind of confusing. We <laughs> seconded. Yep. Okay, Whew. Um, that's super. Okay, mentor program, uh, Sammy has left, but uh, as you all know, we completed the mentor program for this past year with a reception, which was pretty wonderful, with uh, presentations by the artists and the mentors. Um, and our budget for next year includes money to fund the mentor program. So once again, we will go forward with that in the new year. Uh, City Gallery Committee, Ms. Tosher. Okay, City Gallery. Um, well, as you can see, we don't have anything on display. We put up Jim Petrucci, who was up, right. but he needed these pieces of work for, for the, for the studio. Oh, oh, yeah, studio. and I'm gonna contact him and see when he can get these back up as soon as possible. And he will be up, Jim yeah. Petrucci will be up until January 14th. And then my committee, our committee, Linda and I basically <laughs> met and figured out what our calendar for next year will be. We need to fill the slots with names of artists, and Linda and I kicked around some various artists that we thought would be great, and 
like suggestions from the other commissioners as to whose art or an artist that you know or someone we might not be familiar with or whatever that we should check out to fill the slots. Do you want to read off the people that we have on our list so they know? Uh, I just have the ones I wrote. I, do you have the one on your email? email? You. How about, yeah, how about you send us that information before the next meeting? Okay, we'll send okay. you an email. Send can the we, names we and have. then can we do what we're doing for Michael and send names and Send too? names as well. Yeah. yeah. So okay. that when we come to the meeting next month, right. we'll have both the, names, the names you've already right. and more suggestions, and then we'll make some choices. And so what we're doing next year, too, is... Is Nancy Horwick on the list? No, not yet. She should she be. Could. You can see. No, no, of course you want to hear the schedule? No, no not you the schedule. schedule? Just yes, the let's hear just the schedule, Marcy. Okay. That's all. Just <laughs> suggestions. Yes. Here's the schedule. No, we don't need to know that. We really don't. Oh, I said but yes. I want to know. Hear well, that. I'd like to tell. Well, we kind of shortened the all right. o OSA do it. Do it. show. Do it. And it's more even now with the mentor show. Good. So what we've got is a James comes down the 14th, the 5th, March, January 15th to March 15th. We have an artist. March 15th to May 15th, we have an artist. May 16th to June 20th, we have the OSA artists, student. Um, June 20th to August 26th, we have an artist. August 26th, and let me know if you think this works for the mentor show, August 26th to October 9th. I think that works fine because if kids are going off to college, right. they'll still be here, yes. Right. Okay, and then October 9 to January 14th, we're going to run two artists. So we need to select one, two, three, five artists okay. for next year. Okay, we'll chew on that at our next meeting. Yeah, so that's what I had to okay. say. Okay, bravo, bravo. Good job. Okay, public relations, and again, uh, Sammy is uh, had to rush off to pick up her kid, but I think we're getting a lot of PR. Andy? I... I for the Ojai Hub, I look at all the, I have a whole list of events that I look through and stuff, but I look at the Ojai, your guys' website, and there are some events that are outdated. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff outdated. outdated. Yeah. yeah, we were having a little the, well, there's website a, meltdown. The show that was at the museum, it's, it seems to be extending longer than, I think, it, I think they actually changed the show. So, okay. no big deal. Yeah. Okay. I have, yeah, I had you been really more. sick the last, and then I was gone. Oh yeah. So I'm not she criticizing. Might have, no, no. I just want to make sure I f fix it. Yeah. Um, Let me. I'll go back and look. Okay, and but I do have to get that up to date. So yeah, I, okay. I have a heck of a time trying to get people to give me things I have to look yeah. for. Them. I can help with that too if you want me to. Well, that's one of the things that I want to get together with Marcy between now and the next meeting, now that we have a full commission, mm -hmm. yeah. is to review who's on which committees. Yeah. And yeah. I want to talk with you and Nigel and give sure. get some feedback on what committees you would Especially like to work on. And if there are things like, oh, work on a website, which I could do at home on my own time, that's the easiest oh, thing for that me. That would be great. You, Boy, will do the you just said the magic words, yes. I think. I yeah. really do. Music yeah. to yeah. many yeah. people's ears. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, just fabulous. So that you know, um, we were supposed to have our mentor show up during this period of time, and then Jim Petrucci was going to be installed. But the mentors this year, there weren't any. Um, there was one visual artist, yeah. right? Yeah. So we didn't have enough work. Yeah. To 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 display. So Jim Petrucci gets an extended thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's, he had to take cool. his stuff down for the OSA show. It'll be back up. Cool. And then we start fresh in January. Okay, um, we're down to item G, and that should go on your calendar. Uh, November 12th is, at this point, the scheduled joint meeting with the City Council. Oh, that's oh. really an important one. And that's important. Yeah. The, the, uh, at, at our, let's see, that's November 12th. November 12th. So I think... If it's okay with everybody, again, Marcy and I, I think, can sit down between now and then and work out what topics we want to cover with the city council uh -huh. and give Well, I would certainly want to fill them in well, on our projects. That will be at the top of the list, mm -hmm. absolutely. Good. Um, what time is that? Is it 16? That's, no, that's Seven. usually, uh, the, that joint meeting is usually at 6. We do oh, prior to it. Yeah, it's yeah, prior to the normal city council meeting. So what time? Shall so it's normally at six o'clock, the joint meeting. Six o'clock? Yeah, that's usually when it is. Cool. Okay. 
All right. Um, staff liaison, Joe, do you have anything that we need to know? I do not. Okay. Well, are we going to go over the project subject to public art requirements? Because uh, I have a question. Sure, we can do that. We can. Um, do, do you know? I've got it. It's yeah, that after was at the, the very uh, end of the packet. After the PowerPoint. I'm, yeah. I may not have an answer for you as of yet. You have it? I have it. Okay, all right. So um, this, this looks like it's evolved a little, this sheet, because it's actually listing projects that have valuations over 300000 which is so nice not to get them all. Mm -hmm. And it says here, Bryan Street self-storage buildings. Um, and it says it applies. So am I then to assume that this is over $300,000? Yes. It's, uh, Do you know? Oh, 318 Bryan Street. Okay, I'll go check out where that is. It's the two-acre lot uh, behind the existing self-storage. Okay. Um, is that a are, lot that just sold? That's not the Adamson? No, it is next door. It is between the Adamson lot okay. and the um, existing self-storage. There's a, it's a flag lot. There's a long driveway in the lot. And they're putting in more self-storage units. Correct. Okay. Correct. Well, I will go take a look because um, we may want to uh, take uh, a waiver from them if that's what they want to do. But I really want to see the site, and I will encourage sure. Michael and Marcy to go take a look or any of you to go take a peek and see, should we be going for a waiver, or is this a place where it would be nice to have public art? It's not very it's public. If it's back it in, it's so back in behind. Yeah. Okay. It is behind. All right. Good. Current buildings. Yeah. Yeah. We nice. we don't mind taking it if if it's not yeah. going to be a place where we're going to see public art. Correct. Um, yeah. And, and then is, the next it one is probably going to be uh, at least a, a one point five million dollar project. Okay. Oh, okay. Chain. Yeah, that's ching is right. So, you know, it, it's just wonderful to have all these projects that but we're I, looking at. I think at. Andy's comment is, is worth considering. If the people who own this and who are doing this project would consider putting a piece of public art in front of their whole self-storage complex, and for like at the that's why I want at the street. foot of the flag lot at streets at the street right, side. If right, right. Like business of bees over there is in the front, and it's one of you know it's it's right on the cover of this. Worth brochure. investigating. Yeah, anyway. so fabulous. I just think my, my I think Bryant Street is going to become the new very cool district. And yep. It's, it's going to so be like the funk downtown, zone. That's going to be the end of downtown. Let's, like the funk zone. Let's check it out and zone. see if there's yeah, a yeah. spot because I would rather encourage, especially when it is a chunk of change, because they have enough to do something sure, significant. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And we've got money in the public art fund. And the next one, opposite, I'm going to say I hope that they apply for a waiver. That's from the Ojai Valley Inn and Spa. And uh, the public art committee. Uh, is the body that um, uh, hears uh, an application for a waiver and then brings it back here for approval, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lickety split. Because they can't do much for seventy-eight hundred dollars. No, no. no. Um, I think the rest we um, we know the Capri is all set to go. Mm. Um, cottages among the flowers is in um, La La Land. It's been in La La yeah, forever. And, um, that's that's it. My main question was about the Bryan Street, and and as I said, let's, let's go take let's go a look. And look. Yep, mm -hmm. definitely. Let's go to, next time we're at the club. Yeah, what's going on with the pearls? Marcy's joined the club, so the three of us can meet over there, Michael, and then okay. go over there. Good. And we'll get her to go. What's the I, Pearl Street? Uh, Six hundred one Pearl oh, is the nine. Um, it says townhomes, but it's really nine uh, small lot single family homes oh. on that lot, and um, should be going the. Final map should be going to city council soon for approval and then recordation, and oh. then they should start construction, probably grading and construction in the spring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's they, big. Are they, are they, it says it's, it's going for public art, right? So they put in anything, Christine? Not yet, no. No, I mean, are they going to do our public art? Do you know? I'm uh, sorry, I uh, lost. I Pearl Street. Uh, 601 Pearl Street. No, I Pearl Street. Pearl Street oh, yeah, no. became are. complicated because of, um, it became Sight. complicated. Can I leave it at that? Yeah. And as a result of that, we uh, took a waiver. Oh, you took a waiver. Yeah. 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 So if you look at the next sheet, the budget sheet, you'll see it on there. Yeah. You know, does it say on the budget sheet where the waiver came from? Because it was should. Craftsman Village. That's not it. That's a different project. Yeah. Olive Mill, public art fee, third from the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and it's outstanding. They haven't paid it yet, but they won't get a building permit until waiver. they do. So that's a waiver. I just yes. Want to know what's or a certificate of occupancy exactly. or whatever it is until they do. These are all things that need to be tidied up in the ordinance so that they have to pay before they can mm -hmm. begin. But that's, that's to come. Okay, uh, commissioner comments. Let's go down the line. Linda, you want to start? Any comments? Um, just that I'm glad we have a full commission. It's yes. marvelous to have Andy here, and I'm looking forward to working with Nigel. And it's been a long time since we've had a meeting. It's good to see everybody. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I've been really ill, so the website postings for the calendar are a little... I have things way out, but some of the things have missed, ooh, lately have missed me. So I'll get it. I'll check that out. Thank you for sure. anybody ever notices anything or has something come up that they know isn't on there that they think should be. Please let me know. Okay. okay? Well, we'll reconstitute those committees, and I think Andy is definitely going to be on the PR committee yeah, so, that, yeah. so, oh, yeah. so that we can spread that load. Yeah. Okay, uh, I can so only much. second what you said. I'm delighted that Andy and Nigel have joined us. Joe, we're welcoming you as yes. well. And uh, I think we've got a lot of exciting work coming up, so it's good times. Marcy? Comments? I can't add to that. Okay. Christine? Well, you know, I have something to say. I do. Um, so is, every, <laughs> is everybody here knows we have um, the utility box project coming our way. Um, the public art brochure, that's almost, you know, that's being wrapped up now. And then we have the side of the Playhouse Theater kind of off there on a shelf somewhere. We'll see. But I want to share this with you because I'd like you all to give a really of a thought to it, because it would involve us as an arts commission appealing to city council to um, develop the area of the master plan that has been set aside for a sculpture park. And this is what I found, and it's in Kansas City, and it's called Kansas City's Arty Golf Course. Leave it to a museum to shake up mini golf course design for the first time in years. You won't see any windmills at Art Course, the new putting course in the Sculpture Park outside Kansas City's Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Each of the course's colorful installations reinterprets a highlight from the museum's collection, including works as diverse as Kandinsky's Rose with Gray, um, a Rumi sculpture and a vase dating to the Ming Dynasty. Each of the nine holes is meant to teach visitors something. Kandinsky was inspired by his synesthesia, for example, and at the golf course, shapes from his abstract oil painting come alive as bells, chimes, gongs, and other noisemakers. Played from start to finish, art course changes how we view not just mini golf, but also art. And this just, it spoke to me. So I'd love it if you all would just kind of wrap your head around that and see if this is not something or an idea like this that we could put forward to city council and ask them to develop that area and wouldn't that be fabulous to do with our little bundle in the public art fund no not a miniature golf course but it really well, i think well, this anyway, is I, it's just, yeah. it, it no, just tickles it's, me it's something that we can explore and i think we should come up with some ideas to present to the council before we ask them to go forward with it. I think it's Absolutely. up to us to initiate. I agree. Andy, as a new member, do you have anything to no, I, say I, to this just group? Just to also offer, um, obviously, website design and stuff like that, but I've been a graphic designer my whole life, so I can always offer that to you. Um, I would say all boards seem to manage this sort of differently, but on the public boards that I've been on in the past, if an email was sent out, we were always instructed, don't start engaging in a conversation over email. Exactly. Same thing is true here. Yeah. No, I, th I was saying just because of what, like, Nigel's email and so yes. on. So, um, well, yeah, just being cautious. Yeah, we that. didn't talk about that. He, he, needs, correct. To, and he we needs to be hit, have the, the rules explained. <laughs> yeah, correct. Sure. And we will be doing, um, we'll be doing Brown, Act, Brown Act training yeah. for so all the commissions. So you know what they are. Yeah. I do, I do. And it's, it's easy, of course, you want to start engaging, right, of course. Oh, and, yeah. And in a way, yeah. it would be efficient, but. But <laughs> we're bound by the law. We are. So. Yeah. All right, we stand adjourned. Thank you all very much. Good meeting. Good meeting. Got a lot done. Yeah, we did. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I felt so bad for Nigel because I thought what he wrote was spectacular. Yes, exactly. Yeah. First time yeah. I know. It was terrific. He really studied it.
he brought up stuff that was on my mind. I know. Me too. Yeah. You know, he's a thinker. Yep. He's a thinker. Yeah. Yeah. So remind me to send that to you because I will forget. Send me that. Send, send me that letter. More. Okay. I remember that. Thank you, Joe, wherever you are. Let's help him clean up. Right? Oh, she did leave that? Yeah, so what I'm gonna. No, this is me. See, I don't even know what I'm doing. 